looking forward to seeing some fun and interesting photographs. My name is Colette McDonough. Um, I am one of the co-chairs for the Advocacy and Outreach Committee. We're the ones who are putting this on, and we hope that you all have a good time. Uh, we will be uh, having some opening remarks, introductions here soon, presenters, and talking about photos, some trivia. There'll be a pizza party winner. Everybody seems to be surprised by that one. Who knows who will be? I'm going to pick out of this this hat. I didn't have it, have any hats. Uh, and then we will unveil the poster. So I hope you're all looking forward to some fun and interesting uh, stuff going on. Uh, the AONO members, we are a fairly sizable group. Uh, we consist of George Bain, retired from Ohio University. Connie Connor, Ohio History Connection. Amy Zuzbeck, also of the Ohio History Connection. Natalie Fritz, Clark County Historical Society. Jennifer Girth, Franciscan Sisters of the Poor. Ken Grossi of Oberlin College. Jackie Johnson of Miami University. Christine Lisbon, Case Western University. Oh, sorry, Reserve University. Jim McKinnon, University of Dayton. He's my co-chair. Uh, he's awesome. Please tell him so. Laura Smith of Ohio University and also Aaron Wilson. We have two uh, folks that are going to be in charge of like the circus, I guess you could say it. And those people are Natalie Fritz and Ken Grossi. So I'm gonna leave it up to them. All right, I'll just, I'll go first. Um, I think that uh, Colette wanted me to talk a little bit about uh, the process of creating the uh, poster for our Archives Month. Um, this is something that we do as the Advocacy and Outreach Committee. We meet uh, early in the year to throw out ideas. So we're always open to ideas that people have out there for, for things in the future. We, we look at um, any big anniversaries that are coming up or um, major events or things that are important to Ohio and ask everybody on the committee to come to our uh, committee meeting with ideas. And uh, we discuss, um, you know, what, what places we know that might be able to um, to submit images or who we can contact if we know if we end up um, settling on a topic that we know that there are certain places that have great collections that fit those topics. Um, but we're always open to ideas from the general membership of SOA or, or beyond um, for, for future poster ideas. Um, and then we, we put it out there by March for people to submit their uh, submissions. And we've kind of fine-tuned it over the years so that we can ask a little bit more of you guys that are submitting so that it's less work on our end. We make sure that you guys give us the, the good quality 300 DPI at least um, images and um write the captions for us, give us short and long captions that can possibly be used in the future poster and that we can use that for voting. Um, so um, over the years, we figured out, you know, that you guys are the best ones to tell us about your images. So we make sure that you give us all the information that you need. So um, we thank everybody that has submitted. Um, we had a ton of submissions this year. I don't know the number offhand. Colette, you might um, know that or Ken, um, but uh, but yeah, we uh, I think we had it over 70 submissions from a, a, across a lot of different institutions. Every, every institution could submit up to three images. So look for that for next March um, to see what the topic will be. And if you think of a great topic that you would love to see or you know you've got great collections to support that, send it to us and we'll, we'll consider it for next time. And do you want me to, I can turn it over to, to Ken, if you like. Sure. There you go. Ken, Thanks, take Natalie. it off. Yeah, so we're, um, it looks like we're gonna start with our, our pre presenters. Um, and the first one is, is Mark Bloom. He's gonna represent on his images, University of Akron. Hi. Um, 
when to choose images, I'd like to think that we uh, have a process that's uh, astute, insightful, and thoughtful. But on reality, we just like kind of picked a bunch of cool pictures and then go from there. Um, usually, what we do once we hear the theme for the for the year, um, we'll look through our collections and and see what's available uh, as far as the pictures go. Um, this year. This picture, the Goodyear, three Goodyear blimps over Cleveland, um, was from our, obviously, the Goodyear uh, company records. Um, Goodyear produces everything from soles of shoes uh, to parts of space capsules. So there's a lot in between, and mostly it's tires and, uh, and um, uh, balloons or blimps or airships. Uh, so this was sort of a natural, and it came um, from uh, uh, Vic Flesher, our uh, head of our archives. Uh, he published a book this year, and this was the cover of the book. And everybody liked it, so we thought it would be a cool one to submit. Um, it's of uh, the three airships, the Reliant, the um, uh, Puritan, and the Enterprise over... Uh, downtown Cleveland during the 1936-37 um, Great Lakes Exposition. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we thought was kind of neat about this one is that not only was it three ships over the city that's in Ohio, um, but that the exposition uh, drew about 7 million people to downtown Cleveland, and it helped bring Cleveland out of uh, the depression. So that was one of our one of our top picks. That was our top one of our three top picks. Um, and we can go on to the next image. Thank you. This one was out of the um, Opie Evans collection. Um, he was a in Akron. He was a photographer and I. Uh, well, he's sort of a Renaissance man. He he did a little bit of everything. And he had small businesses that he would run, uh, including an ice cream truck. Um, he uh, published a news, uh, small newspaper, the Akronite, and um, uh, worked with the uh, mayor of Akron um, to promote civic unity. Uh, he was on the committee uh, to promote civic unity. And... Um, he also did a lot of volunteer work with uh, churches and, and a, a number of charities. Um, he did a lot of firsts in Akron as a, um, um, a broadcaster. He had his own uh, TV hour called This is Akron with Opie Evans. And uh, he went around and did a lot of photography um, for the area. Um, this one is the NAACP. Uh, they're signing up people to go on the um, freedom rides down in um, Alabama. They, um, this is just after the first freedom rides were firebombed and, and the riders were beaten. Um, and the, the main um, uh, group uh, called the Congress of Racial Equity had stopped um, doing the freedom rides, but uh, uh, there were volunteers from all over the country that still continued to ride down in order to get people to uh, be aware, uh, to be able to register to vote. Um, this one, we uh, we didn't we didn't find this one right away. Opie Ovens was. Um, if it wasn't on our radar for our transportation, uh, and I'm not sure Vic found, I mean, Vic brought it up, and it was all of a sudden this one popped on us. And it's a bus, it's transportation, and not only that, it's transportation for a good cause. So we submitted it, and I think everybody liked it, you know, here when we submitted it. So, um, that's, well, that's about all I got on these, so it was good. No, thank you, Mark. Yeah. 
So I guess I, I get to introduce myself again. I'm Ken Grossi. I'm the uh, archivist at Oberlin College. Um, and when we were thinking about how to uh, pick a photograph to match the, the theme for the poster, um, you know, what came to mind immediately was bicycles. I mean, bicycles are still probably today the most important the easiest mode of transportation in Oberlin, uh, and certainly there are a lot of bikes on campus. Um, I was looking at a pictorial memories of Oberlin, both community and college from 1976. And there's a sign that says, um, beware of the 4,000 bicycles in Oberlin. Now our population has never gotten above like 25. Well, I guess with students too, but so, uh, you know, that's, you know, I think that, you know, that includes students, but, you know, I think probably the number could have been higher. There's a lot of people uh, in the community that ride to work, into the college, um, and certainly I'm envious because I have to drive to work. So um, so we, we knew that we had a lot of photographs about bicycles. Um, you know, we have lots of photographs of, of bicycles parked outside of this building, which is the main library. Um, but we wanted to go back and take a look because we knew we had the the high wheel club that was started in 1890 here at the college. Uh, and again, in the pictorial memories book, there's lots of uh, bicycle photographs. Then we stumbled upon this photograph and we, we kind of wondered what in the heck is going on here with this guy riding this bike. Uh, and so we were trying to theorize about, you know, what is he doing? Um, of course, uh, this is in 1937, and I believe this is uh, near our Tappan Square, which is the main green space in Oberlin. Uh, you can see the cars in the background. Um, so maybe he's just showing off, right? He's he's uh, riding down the path there uh, and just showing off. Um, another theory is that um, perhaps um, he's... He, you know, he's trying to stop the thing by pulling it back with the wheelie, right? He's flying down the path and all of a sudden he's trying to stop it and maybe dismount. Uh, again, you can see his hair. So he's he's really picked up some speed there. Another thing, another theory was that maybe he's uh, late for class. So he is trying to, you know, fly through the square and everybody got to get out of his way because he, he's got somewhere to go. The most plausible reason that we came up for with was that he just doesn't know how to ride this bike and he's all over the place with it. So in any event, um, you know, this is a this is a um, a photograph that kind of represents really the, the important transportation mode here in Oberlin. Um, as you know, as I mentioned before, you know, we have other photographs. We also have in our objects collection a bell from a bike that was purchased in China by uh, Mary Louise Van Dyke, who was the class of 1947, uh, had it on her bike. In fact, the bike now is, is at the Oberlin Heritage Center and the bell is here in the college archives. And I would, you know, I can, I can just see Mary Louise riding her bike through Oberlin coming to the library. Uh, she was an affiliate scholar here. So she, you know, she did a lot of work with hymnology and so forth. So she'd park her bike out front come up to the fourth floor and do her research. So, you know, and again, I always see other staff and faculty and students riding their bikes to the main library here at Oberlin. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, certainly, uh, you know, one of the, you know, the main reason why we picked the photograph is just because of the expression on the face and the hair and the wind and so forth. Um, just, I just wanted to mention, you know, that, you know, certainly we have other collections in the archives that relate to transportation. Um, one of the interesting ones is uh, because, it, you know, uh, Catherine Wright Haskell, who was the sister of the Wright brothers, went to school here, graduated in 1898. Uh, we do have, you know, materials related to her, but we also have, um, replicas of the tin foils that the that the Wright brothers used during their experiments, uh, you know, to figure out the wind and all that, the resistance for the plane. So, um, you know, so we do have um, those uh, in our in our objects collection, the building, our, our, our physics lab is, is named after the Wright brothers, and both of them got honorary degrees in 1910. 
Um, we also have a collection uh, from Byron Newton, who was a student here in the 1800s. He actually was at Kitty Hawk uh, and witnessed the, the uh, flight of, um, of the Wright brothers, but he noted in his journal, which we have, at the time of the first flight, people that were around him uh, who were supposed to be snapping cameras and taking pictures were so in awe that they forgot to do so. So uh, he said, but that didn't happen for the second flight. But in any event, you know, he did he did add the firsthand account about the Wright brothers. So uh, so we have lots of other collections that relate to transportation here in Oberlin and Lorraine County, uh, and um, you know, but you know, we we are we are. We were happy that this one was selected uh, to be part of the, the competition for the poster. So thank you very much. Well, I'll, I'll jump back in and we can do some we can do some transportation related trivia. Um, this is a um, on your own activity. If you want to grab a piece of paper and jot down your answers, you can. We'll go over the answers at the end. but. Uh... And you guys can give yourselves a pat on the back. We don't have any prizes for this part. But, uh, which of the following is a canal that was built in Ohio? The Ohio Erie Canal, A, B, the Suez Canal, C, the Five Rivers Canal, or D, the Erie Canal? Go to the next slide. Number two. What Ohio-based company is known for making blimps? A, Dum Dums, B, Goodyear, C, UPS, or D, Hershey? I'm giving you guys the easy ones. They get a little bit harder. Number three, before the Wright brothers made airplanes, they made A, canal boats, B, bicycles, C, farm wagons, or D, trains. Number four, who invented the self-starter for the car? A, Charles Kettering, B, Henry Ford, C, Alfred Sloan, or D, the Stanley Brothers? I'll throw it back over to Ken. Hey, thanks, Natalie. Uh, next up is Barb Sedlock from Defiance College to talk about her photographs. Hi. Um, Defiance doesn't have a transportation collection per se, but you never know um, what people viewing your cultural heritage site may come up with. Like, I got contacted this summer by a Cadillac enthusiast who saw pictures of Eisenhower visiting campus in 1953. That's one of our photos that's on the list. And he is so enthusiastic about Cadillacs that he came here in June to look at our material so he could learn more about this particular car that Eisenhower rode in. So this picture you're looking at is a hot air balloon. And in 1969, our biology professor, Jim Fry, got the idea to offer a history of ballooning course at the college. And he and a history professor bought a Raven hot air balloon with gold eagles, this one you're looking at in the picture. And their first launch was from the athletic field, but this particular one, they're launching it from central campus. In 1970, they offered a winter term slash January term course on the history of ballooning to DC students. And that's where we had a fall semester. And then January, we had a four week course where the students only studied one course for the four weeks. And then there was spring semester. And in summer of 1970, CBS News reporter Hughes Rudd and his crew spent three days on campus filming a segment on ballooning that aired on the CBS Evening News with Roger Mudd on August 1st, 1970. Fry and Beam were offering a Balloon Institute course on campus that summer when filming was done. The student newspaper reported in 19, December 1971 that the DC was the first college in Ohio to offer a course on ballooning and at that time was the only one. By 1975, Fry and fellow science professor James Burke were taking the balloon to various contests and rallies in the Midwest. In 1976, Burke was ranked 18th out of 1,600 pilots in the country. And by 1980, he was prominent enough to be named the Balloonmeister of the Balloon Federation of American National Championship. 
So that's the story behind this balloon. And I don't know what happened to it. I haven't been able to document if it got damaged and they had to get rid of this one or what exactly happened. This picture is our Glee Club in 1926, starting off on a tour of New England. This was a bus called Sally, and it took 16 men and two women, the accompanist and the director of the choir. And we have this, this and six or seven other pictures were bought off of eBay by a man named David Jones in 2021, who collects items related to the Mohawk Trail in Northwest Massachusetts, because one of the pictures was labeled the fact that they were on the Mohawk Trail. He donated the pictures to us once he got what he needed off of them. And I'm sure we can all bless people who don't throw away yard sale finds like this and find uh, archives that would be interested in them. Among the other pictures he sent us is one of the men trying to push Sally out of a snowdrift. And the conditions were so bad that day that it prevented them from making their concert that night in Ravina, New York. And another photo I didn't include, it was kind of interesting. Um, it's Sally being pulled out of the mud by a team of oxen. And other places the guys visited was Washington, Boston, Niagara Falls, West Point, and Valley Forge. And one of the highlights of their trip was when they were in Washington, D.C., they happened to attend the same church as President Coolidge that day. Next. Okay, this is Dwight Eisenhower in defiance. He's actually arriving. I think I put that he was leaving with the caption when I submitted, but I fa since found out he was arriving in, uh, in defiance on this B&O train car. And you might ask, well, how did we get a sitting president to come to a small college in Ohio? Well, we had an insider. In 1950, defiance's trustees asked Eisenhower, who was then president of Columbia U, to help them find a suitable president for defiance college. Kevin McCann, who was Eisenhower's aide, suggested himself. And um, for a time, Eisenhower, uh, excuse me, McCann was um, flying back and forth be between Paris, where Eisenhower was serving as the head of SHAPE, Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe, and Defiance, sort of sharing the job for a few months. And at the same time, McCann was working on a authoring a biography about Eisenhower, Man from Abilene, which was published in time for Eisenhower's presidential campaign. So once Eisenhower became president, um, they tried to get him to come in September of that year, but things didn't fall together until October. And the visit was part of Ohio's sesquicentennial celebration. The local airport wasn't deemed well enough equipped for Ike to arrive by airplane, so he flew into Toledo and came to Defiance by train, as you see here, arriving at the B&O Depot. He had a very tight schedule that day. At 11.30, he arrived at the depot. 11.35, motorcade to campus through downtown. 11.50, introductions and invocation. And there was one minute in the schedule allotted for applause. In 11.55 to 12.10, he delivers his speech. And we actually have an audio recording of the speech that was made that day. And he said in the speech, one reason he came to campus was to return the visit that our choir had made when they went to Washington to sing for his inauguration in January. 1210 to 1216, he laid the cornerstone for the new library on campus. 1220, motorcade back to the train. At 1230, he departed Washington on the Wabash Railroad, going to Toledo, where he took a plane to Kansas City and then gave a speech about farm policy. And I thought this picture was relevant because the B&O Railroad was very historic. It was the oldest in the US, chartered in 1827 in Maryland, and it reached the Ohio River by 1852. And then some mergers expanded it into Ohio and Defiance wound up being on the line, uh, being a line to Chicago. But I found out that the B&O stopped carrying passengers in Ohio only a few years after Eisenhower's visit in 1958. And the B&O is still in existence today as part of the CXS system. Thanks. Thank you, Barb. Unfortunately, today uh, we were not able to have uh, Rachel Bessert uh, from the Dayton Metro Library uh, uh, come. She had a uh, family emergency, uh, so I'm not going to try to uh, talk about her photo. Uh, it is just a neat, at least from what I'm seeing, it's pretty a neat photo. And this lady right here, if you can see my cursor, is... Uh, Electra 
I don't remember what her last name was, but she was uh, the head of the Dayton Metro Library system. Uh, pretty cool lady. And this is, I believe, their first uh, library on wheels. And I'm going to go with it's the 20s, but I don't know that for sure. And uh, if you have more questions, you should get a hold of Rachel. She would love to hear from you. Trying to get it to go to the next one. Yeah, but, think, it doesn't, but it doesn't want to. The trivia like, time you again. Must, you must look at this one. <laughs> okay. All right. Trivia time again. The medium level. Who was not an astronaut from Ohio? Neil Armstrong, John Glenn, or Chuck Yeager? Next question. Which Ohio city was famous for its steam locomotives? Lancaster, Canton, Lima, or Dayton? High wheel bicycles are also known as penny farthing, elicitoped, bone shaker, or starly wheeler. What was the heyday for steamboats on the Ohio River? 1790s, 1820s to 1880s, 1895 to 1925, or 1965 to 1975? Now that everybody's had a few seconds to do their uh, very difficult medium questions, it's time to pick a name from a, well, I don't have a hat. I have to, got this. And we're going to see who of the top 10 of all the organizations that were in the top 10 got put into this hat. And we'll see who wins. I'm not looking. You can all see that I'm not looking. Oh, it's one of the places that was not unable to attend today. The Cincinnati Museum Center. Huzzah! So they'll be winning a $100 gift card that they can use towards a pizza party, which I'm sure Jessica, who's sitting right over here, uh, will be happy because she works uh, part-time there. <laughs> so Jessica, you're going to get some pizza. This had nothing to do with Jessica just happened to be that way. So time for more trivia. All right. Uh, it's a hard trivia time. Which of the following is not working is not working Ohio Canal boat? Is not a working canal boat. The Pioneer, the Volunteer, St. Helena the Third, or Monticello the Third. Who built the engine for the first airplane? The Ford Company, Tim Taylor, Charlie Taylor, or Carl Baines? Well, as you can see, we have unveiled the poster for the year. This is the 2023 Archives Month poster. And some of the photos that we have included just so happen to get in, uh, you've already heard from. Uh, the Basically, the idea of the poster is we wanted to focus on transportation because transportation has 
been an important part of Ohio history, basically since even before we were state. Um, unfortunately, those photos uh, aren't don't happen, haven't happened because photo photography wasn't a thing yet. Uh, so um, we were able to get a lot of materials from organizations all over the all over the state, including Southeastern Ohio, Northern Ohio, all over. Uh, so many times with uh, these sort of things, we only have like, you know, the same old, same old people. Uh, but thankfully with a topic like transportation, we were able to get, uh, we, were, we heard from organizations that we have never heard from before. We just sent out a mass thing, uh, worked with our fellow organizations, uh, such as the, um, I guess what the OLA, uh, that's what I always call them, Ohio Local History Alliance. Uh, we worked with them and uh, a few other organizations to help get out the news. And so we had more than 30 organizations submit photos. Uh, the top 10 uh, were sent in to our designer at the uh, Ohio History Connection, and this is what they came up with. What a beauty. We will be sending these out in the mail here soon. I don't know exactly when, uh, but it will probably be in the next week to two weeks. So keep an eye on your... Uh, your mailboxes they are with the printer now i Ooh. don't know exactly what our what our what our um planned mail date is but soon well thank you so we would love to have you guys put them up in a place of uh importance where the public would be able to see them i keep mine not that you can see it because i have uh a thing on so it looks like i'm sitting outside for uh some reason but we display them afterwards uh down here in the archive they make um uh, some nice decorations uh much better than a lot of the photos that we have because at the kettering foundation we have meetings we have pictures of meetings not very not very interesting so we put up the ohio uh archives month posters So now to go over the correct answers. All right, so the easy questions. Which of the following is a canal that was built in Ohio? It was A, the Ohio Erie Canal. Number two, what Ohio-based company is known for making blimps? The Goodyear Company, of course. Before the Wrights made airplanes, they made Bicycles, everyone knows that. Who invented the self starter? Charles F. Kedrine. Oh, too far. Oops. <laughs> I clicked too hard. Number five, who was, who was not an astronaut from Ohio? Of course, it's C. Chuck Younger. Which Ohio City was famous for steam locomotives is Lima. Uh, high wheel bicycles are also known as Penny Farthing. And what was the heyday of for steamboats in, on the Ohio River? The 1820s to the 1880s. Hopefully, everyone's getting all these right. All right, number nine, which of the following is not a working Ohio canal boat? And that was the Pioneer. And who built the engine for the first airplane is Charlie Taylor. Hopefully everybody got them right, but Colette doesn't have any more gift cards for anybody else. Sorry. <laughs> um, the Advocacy and Outreach uh, committee would love to thank uh all the people who submitted 
uh, we had a very large amount of submitters this year. It was close to 70, maybe 72. And we even had a few non-archives or organization. They weren't even some with uh, cultural heritage organizations, including my dad, uh, which he normally wouldn't have submitted something like this. And he, if we would have asked him to talk, he wouldn't have done this. Uh, but we're really happy that everybody submitted photos and we can't do this poster without all of you because, um, well, we don't have, we don't have any photos as an organization uh, that would be super duper interesting for people to see um, unless you're a part of the organization, but you all do have really cool photos. And I have to say being on this committee is so much fun compared to other committees that I've been on uh, because I get to look at cool photos and help organize this uh, event. Uh, so be on the lookout for the poster and it will be here soon. And we, uh, our organization, uh, Society of Heart Archivists has many things, or at least five things planned for uh, Archives Month and the advocacy and outreach. Uh, we will be um, doing archives spotlights and we will be doing that every Tuesday in October. So keep your eyes open on Facebook. And that is all we have for today.